Today's video is brought to you by EA Game Changers. EA Game Changers, we promise we're not receiving kickbacks, and no, you cannot see our tax returns. Hey folks, welcome back to Rated RPG, your number one channel for gaming news. I gotta say, I am just getting sick and tired of covering EA at this point because, I mean, it's EA. People are sick and tired of them. At the same time, though, I am loving them for giving me so much fodder for clicks. Like and subscribe. The weekend was abuzz with news, with everybody wondering, what is this new game going to be that Respawn Entertainment's putting out, and just how much influence will EA have on it? Well, that game, Apex Legends, came out, and to everyone's surprise, it's a good game. I took a look at some gameplay, but actually spent some time playing it today. I sucked at it, but I still had fun. I'm honestly surprised, and I honestly want to tip my hat to Respawn Entertainment. The game is it's fun to play. I don't know how to describe it. You, This whole interaction of the teams having to work together, not just the cover fire system you see in other multiplayer COD type stuff, but the way you can use skills and abilities to help each other out. It's really something I advise you to check the game out if you are into Battle Royale at all. It's not going to be for everybody. It's not going to be for me long term. I just had fun with the with it for a few hours. Best part is it's free to play, so go check it out. I highly recommend it. I'm sure that it's going to be a contender in the future in the Battle Royale genre, so take a look. I am, however, a little disappointed as to their microtransaction system. It's a free to, game, free to play game, so you can't complain too much. But when they're charging $20 for cosmetics, that still seems a little steep to me. Personally, I would see like to see that drop down to, I don't know, $5 a skin or something. I know it's funny. I mean, here we are arguing about how much should they charge for cosmetics when all the time we're arguing and lamenting for the days back when cosmetics were just unlockable. But hey, it's the day we live it's the age and day we live in live services, yada yada yada, online games. This ain't what it once was. So, I'm going to kind of leave Apex Legends there, give it my thumbs up, say good job Respawn Entertainment, and now we're going to talk about EA itself. As I mentioned last night, they took a stock hit. I mean, brutal. I reported in my video that it was a 10% stock dive. Others have reported as high as 20. That's not just, that's anywhere from 2.5 to $5 billion. It is hard to believe that anyone can take that and not see some drastic changes coming in the future. But my worry is that Andrew Wilson, the CEO of Electronic Arts, is learning the wrong lesson. Now, I am a prolific reader. I spend a lot of time reading novels, enjoying them, loving them. Look behind me, that ain't for show. And I just finished rereading a couple of days Eric Flint's sci-fi novel, 1632. But before going on to my next novel, I decided to spend today flipping through EA's uh, third quarter corporate filings. Dry reading for the most part, but I got to this nice little section where Andrew Wilson is talking about what he thinks caused this stock dive. He admits freely that quarter three was not a good quarter for the company, but he's quoting for the wrong reasons entirely. He goes off on Battlefield Five and how it hurt them because they focused too much on a single player campaign and didn't devote enough time to their own battle royale. That is not what is hampering EA at this moment. What is hampering EA at this moment and causing their stock to drop is the lack of consumer confidence and from that, people not wanting to buy their crappy products. Respawn has just managed to put out a good product. I'm very happy about that. I wish Respawn well on this. BioWare is working on Anthem. Anthem, I 
I'm not sure how well it's going to do. I played the demo. I liked it. I think it's worth playing. It's not for me because I don't go for online games and I don't want to have to pay a monthly subscription to be on PlayStation Plus. But I think it's a good game. And those who are enjoying the looter shooter genre, give it a look. Back to the point though, Andrew Wilson's statements about the sustainability of the company falling apart because of putting their money in the wrong places, he has that wrong. It's not that they're putting their money in the wrong places, it's that they're trying to get money from too many places. There's this old expression about corporations where they say it's too big to fail. The idea that once a corporation has gotten to a certain size and has its arms and everything, that it's not, the company can't fail. It's too big, too massive. If it fails, then the economy is going down with it. The problem with them is not that they are too big to fail. The problem is that they are trying to get so big continuously that it is going to cause them to fail. I am a devout capitalist. I will not talk about my political views on this show. That's just not something I'm interested in getting into. Yes, if someone like Anita Sarkeesian mouths off about uh, male toxic gamers, blah, 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 ruining the industry, or Patrick Soderlin says something about how women are underrepresented in the genre because we all suck, I'm going to speak out because that's something that can affect game development and affects us as gamers. I will not, however, tell you who I voted for president. That's not why I'm here. But I will tell you about my economic views. And once again, I am a devout capitalist. That means providing a service that people will want to pay for and get something out of it. That's what causes your business to grow. EA is trying to get as much money as possible from their consumers in order to continue to grow and look more desirable for new investors. There's not necessarily anything wrong with that idea. The problem is EA is taking that to the extreme. They want to continue growing at X uh, expansion growth amount every single year. And when they don't reach those bars, they think they have failed and investors look badly at the company because they have pushed so hard to meet those quotas every year. Battlefield 5, 7 million copies sold. It's a disappointment. Mass Effect Andromeda. Didn't sell well, but it covered its costs. Disappointment. Shut her down. Not to mention other titles that has sold in the millions, but EA has declared them failures because they don't surpass that bar. That don't bring in that massive influx of cash to top year after year. The perfect example of what I'm talking about, goods business-wise, is Henry Ford. Now, we can talk about Henry Ford's personal problems all you want. I'm not going there. I'm talking about his business philosophy. Henry Ford is the one who created the five-day work week because back in the day, workers were expected to work six days a week then go to church on Sunday. He looked at that and said, this is dumb. I want people to buy my cars. I want people to have a reason to buy my cars and get the product out there, increase consumer confidence. So he shortened the work week to five days, gave all of his employees a raise, and encouraged them, hey, why don't you go buy something? They bought his cars. That is how he got people invested, by giving them something of equal value. He was not being altruistic when he did all that. He was being cold, calculating, but still doing something that benefited both him and the consumer. EA, with their monetization policies, has been doing everything they can to benefit themselves, to make themselves look more desirable for investors, but it's going to come back to bite them in the butt. Right now, things actually don't look that bad for EA, with the exception of the optics on the whole Belgium loot boxes thing. What, where are they actually failing at the moment? They still have FIFA Ultimate Team worldwide except for Belgium. They still have their Star Wars licensing agreement with Disney, and Disney has just affirmed in the past 24 hours that licensing deal isn't going anywhere. They have now got Apex Legends coming out of the gate, a big success, which is honestly a feather in the cap that EA needed, optics-wise. 
They have Anthem coming out, which looks to be shaping up to be a mechanically sound game. There is nothing product-wise that EA is doing wrong currently. The optics, though, is what is consistently making EA underperform. When you have men like Patrick Soderlund get up and tell gamers, if you don't like our personal philosophy, well, get lost, don't buy our game. Guess what? People aren't going to buy the game. EA's problem is a optics problem. It is a management problem. Andrew Wilson, he is interested in making the most money possible, which I am not against as a capitalist. But when he begins to shyst the consumers in order to make the investors happy, that's going to be a long-term issue. I realize I'm kind of circling back on myself here and there, and turning this into a rant, but I'm okay with that because I like this rant. I like yelling at EA. They're very easy to yell at. Once again, a message for you, EA. Don't screw up. You have got Apex Legends just out, doing well. You have got Anthem coming up. You have got a future Star Wars title release. And for God's sake, don't cancel it. Not again. I mean, I wouldn't put a past you at this point, because honestly. Number four, supposedly y'all have another Titanfall game coming later this year. Do it right. And I'm getting tired of yelling at y'all. I mean, it's getting me the likes, but I'm getting tired of yelling at y'all. At some point, you've got to get tired of taking the abuse, because Andrew Wilson, you might be a masochist, but I can't imagine everybody at the company is. So that is all I have to say on EA today. It seems to be what a lot of people are saying. Before we go, though, I want to take a look at some of my favorite games. A couple video ga videos ago, I made a list of some of my favorite PS4 titles. I excluded, however, remasters. This time, I want to look at some of my favorite PlayStation 4 remasters. I've chosen these because they are some of my favorite PlayStation 4 remasters, and as such, may not get covered in future talks about favorite PlayStation 3 games or whatnots, PlayStation 2 games, because maybe I don't own that version of the game anymore. So I want to make sure to mention the remasters. So first up, Final Fantasy X. This is my first Final Fantasy title, one of my all-time favorite games. Love it. Gotta have it. I still want to murder those freaking chocobos in that zero, zero finish the race in zero second section I finished that race it took me a long long time to do it it's not fun L.A. Noir. great game yes mocap is weird sometimes it was early mocap but it was still fun I admit it, I played the whole detective portions through with a guide because I felt, didn't feel like uh, <laughs> trying to figure out the whole, is he looking to the left, looking to the right, does that mean he's lying? I still had fun anyway, sue me. The Last of Us Remastered. I am not one of the people who goes crazy over The Last of Us. It's a good game. It's a great game. I really enjoyed it. I'm not one of those, some of the, I've seen some people who go irrationally crazy saying how good this game is. I think it is really good. I will give it that. And I think it's worth playing. And I'm glad there's going to be a sequel. But some guys may need to tone it down a bit. It's not the best game ever. I feel like I'm going to get my uh, comment section flooded with hate mail now. Uncharted, the Nathan Drake Collection. Great games all. I played through all three of these games in less than a week because I did not play these on the PlayStation 3. I just picked up the Nathan Drake Collection on a whim uh, from my GameStop guy, his suggestion, because he knows what I like. He knows what my purchase history is like. He recommended this. I finally played them. Love them. I think... That Uncharted 2 is the best of the original trilogy, 
but I really liked Uncharted 3 just because of the desert setting and the airplane scene really is just fun and it's very cinematic. I do admit though that Uncharted 2 is probably the best of them. And finally, from our remasters, Yakuza Kiwami Kazuba. This is a great game. I have the Steelbook. If you watched my last video where I talked about my favorite PlayStation games, you know I love Steelbooks. So this is a great addition to my collection. I still need to get Kiwami 2. I am looking forward to all the other upcoming Yakuza uh, remasters. And I'm looking forward to Judgment. I don't know much about Judgment thus far, other than that it's going to be a Yakuza-like game, except from the law enforcement point of view. So I am very excited for it. I'm excited to find out more about it. Thank you all for tuning in to Rated RPG. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate all the support you've given us thus far. Uh, we're going to just keep it going on the subscriber count. We're going to keep it going on the view count. We're going to do our best and we're going to get you the news and opinions and the discussions that you deserve. So thank you for listening. Go ahead and smash that like button if you so desire. Drop a comment down below. Thanks for watching. Rated RPG.